Today we're going to talk about estate administration of small estates. We're going to break this into two videos. The first one will be about the structure and, and requirements of an affidavit of collection of personal property. And the second video, which will come next, will be about how you can use an affidavit for collection of personal property strategically when planning your estate. My name is Gregory Singleton. I'm an estate planning and probate attorney located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I work for Signature Law, which is an estate planning and probate law firm that serves the Twin Cities and greater Minnesota alike. Just a reminder, if you watch this video and you find yourself liking it, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps support the channel. Two other things before we start, just a little housekeeping. One, this is an educational video. It is not legal advice. Uh, and two, we're going to be talking about Minnesota law here, specifically Minnesota statutory law. So if you are in another state and have some questions, make sure you talk to an attorney in that who is licensed in your state. So what do I mean about estate administration of small estates? Well, we're talking a lot about probate in this series. And probate, of course, is the process by which a court of law approves of the distribution of an estate after you've died. Basically, you got all your stuff, you died, someone needs your stuff, and a court, by a matter of, as a matter of law, has to approve who gets your stuff. Now, probate involves a lot. There are a lot of notices, filing fees, hearings, conferences, uh, inventories, uh, you name it, it's all matched up in there before you even get to the point of distributing the estate. You probably have to use an attorney. It's going to cost a lot of money, so we try to avoid it when possible. Now, there's several ways of avoiding probate. The one you probably hear about the most is using a revocable living trust. There, there you still have to go through a trust administration, but you do avoid the probate process. Now, what we're going to talk about today is not revocable living trusts, but a probate alternative called Affidavit of Collection of Personal Property. And now, an affidavit for collection of personal property is just that. It's an affidavit that allows the rightful successor to collect property from the estate without going through the process of probate. Now, it's a probate alternative under Minnesota Statute 524.3-1201. It's on the screen right now. Uh, it's really just a one-page form. You can fill it out yourself. But we will be talking about some reasons why you might want to consult with an attorney before using an affidavit of collection of personal property. Now, not just anyone can fill out an application and do a small estate administration. There are some requirements, of course. First is the big one. You have to have a small estate. This means having a probate estate of less than $75,000. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. Uh, secondly, 30 days must have elapsed since the decedent died. Fourth, there can't be a personal representative appointed or an application or petition for a personal representative in the works. And finally, the person who's filling out the affidavit must be a rightful successor who is entitled to the property. So not just anyone can fill out an affidavit for collection of personal property on any estate. So let's look at a hypothetical. Let's say your father has died, um, his uh, spouse has died, his parents have died, all your siblings have died. You're the one that's left. And uh, his assets are less than $75,000. Let's say it's sixty grand. Um, 30 days have passed since he died, and nobody is filing for it to be a personal representative because, you know, it's all going to you. What do you do? You, uh, the statute specifically states that when after you filled out an affidavit for collection of personal property that the property is released to the same extent as if a personal representative had been appointed now that's important we're going to talk about that in just a minute but there's no personal representative but we pretend it's just like as if a personal representative has been appointed so we're going to focus on two of the requirements for, being a, for using an affidavit for collection of personal property. First, we're going to look at the affiant, and second, we're going to look at the small estate. Now, the affiant is, an affiant is somebody who fills out an affidavit. So if you fill out an affidavit for collection of personal property, you are the affiant. 
generally it's going to be the spouse or the kid or uh, maybe the parent of the decedent who fills out the affidavit for collection of personal property. If there's a will, it could be someone designated as a personal representative. Interestingly, the government, the state, can actually fill out an affidavit for collection of personal property under the statute. Now, this might happen if, uh, let's say we go back to the previous hypothetical, the, the decedent has $60,000. But what if the decedent also had $80,000 worth of tax liability when he died? Or what if the decedent had medical assistance costs that need to be reimbursed by the state? Now the state has priority on this money, so they're gonna fill out an affidavit for collection of personal property, take what is owed to them, and close the estate. But let's say that uh, that's not the case, but there are multiple beneficiaries. What if there are multiple people that have equal right to the property? Generally, one person fills out the affidavit for collection of personal property and distributes the, prop the property appropriately. So this means that uh, giving the property to all those who have an interest in the estate. Um, generally, you're gonna follow the intestacy statutes to make sure that everyone that is owed money gets their stuff, follow the will if there's a will, and you need to make sure that there are creditors. The result of this is that by statute, if you receive property or transfer of property, you are answerable and accountable for that property to either A, any personal representative who is later uh, appointed to the estate, and B, to any other person with a superior right. So if you try to take that which is not yours by using an affidavit of collection of personal property, you're gonna be personally liable for any creditor or for anyone that has a superior uh, right to the stuff. So, the result of this is you want to do your due diligence before you fill out an affidavit for collection of personal property. You want to make sure that you are the one that is owed everything. You need to make sure there's no will under the intestacy statutes that you are the one that has a right to it. You need to make sure there's no creditors. If you make sure there's no estranged children that might be owed something equally to you or more than you. Um, you need to make sure you have all the rightful heirs. So. This is might be when you want to bring in an attorney to help you with that search, interpret the statute, and make sure you get all your ducks in a row. The second requirement for an affidavit for collection of personal property that I want to talk about today is the requirement of being a small estate. What does having a probate estate of less than $75,000 mean? Well, we actually talk about this in another video, so I'm not going to harp on it too much, but a general rule of thumb is the probate estate is, are going to be those assets that uh, don't have a beneficiary designation and are wholly owned by the decedent. So if you follow that as a general rule of thumb, you can figure out what the probate estate is. Then all you do is you add everything up and if it's under $75,000, you got yourself a small estate administration. So. If you are faced with the administration of a small estate that qualifies under the statute, you may be able to avoid probate outright using an affidavit for collection of personal property. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how you can use the affidavit for collection of personal property strategically when planning your estate. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did like today's video, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps support the channel. If you're interested in what we're talking about, we're in a series on probate, though the next video we're going to talk a little bit more about estate planning, but it's all part and parcel of the same thing. We have a new video coming out every Wednesday, other Wednesday, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or send me an email. Otherwise, until next time, this is Gregory Singleton with Signature Law.